Hi everyone, I hope you're having a great day today. Um, <coughs> I have something to show you. So, I have a Challenger Linux 9 VM up and running now. So here's the boot process. <laughs> I fixed my issue with uh, Drake Cut and Grub. I had to manually create a Etsy Grub default or Etsy default Grub file. Um, so now it's all working. I had to recreate the init ramifest and Grub config too while I was at it. And now it actually boots. Um, it doesn't get stuck at init queue anymore. So we're going to log in as root. The password is I love open source freeloaders. <laughs> Welcome to Challenger Linux 9. Uh, this is the very first bootable image of Challenger. At the current moment, it is closer to a RHEL beta release than a RHEL 9.2 release. Some packages are not one-to-one -one with RHEL 9.2. There are likely many bugs due to this image being bootstrapped manually by hand. There is no Anaconda installer image at this time. There are no public repositories at this time either. Built with love, CentOS Stream 9 source code, and a little bit of Rocky on top. So I am excited. Uh, this is a bootable distribution now. Challenger Linux 9 built using CentOS Stream 9 source code to be a clean room RHEL clone. Um, and that is awesome that it boots now. Uh, let me show you the rub file I had to manually create. Oh yeah, I don't have Vim, it's B. So this is the default grub file that I needed to create manually so the system would work. Uh, so that's done. Uh, I did the old-fashioned way of things uh, for setting up a raw image. I made one uh, drive partition and that is formatted with ext4 and there, are, there is no swap at all. I did not set that up. Uh, Hacky. Here's the FS tab. Uh, there's that. So it's just one partition. The whole partition is the root partition. All five gigabytes. Uh, see how much space it takes up. One one point three gigabytes is how much space it takes up. Um, Let's list the installed packages. It's probably not all of them you need for a RHEL minimal uh, image or a RHEL minimal install, but that is because I bootstrapped manually and I didn't install reinstall all of the packages in the true environment. So all these packages that are installed are from when I was uh, doing a little more bootstrapping and had to rebuild packages I didn't make or I forgot to make and then put them on the uh, local repository. Um, I'm using an Apache web server for the local repository. I'm just hosting it on my computer. Uh, that's how I had to do the bootstrap. It would not work if I pointed it to a directory on my Fedora system. So, me. But I can uh, search for packages using the local repository. Um, so there's the kernel package, localhost, <laughs> or all that. So I am so thrilled to have this. Uh, I didn't ever think I'd get to this point, but I did. Uh, we did. Um, I have some good news about hosting. Um, I talked to the boys over at Canarium, specifically Josh O'Leary. He said that I could use the 
Canarium server to host a package repository, GitLab, everything I need. He actually really wants me to do that because we have plenty of uh, resources that needs used at Canarium software. Uh, so that's awesome. Um, I'm really excited about that. I'm going to be working on that here soon. Uh, I do need to do a little bit more debranding still. Uh, I just got to replace the secure boot keys with the Rocky ones because I got permission to do that by someone in the Rocky Matter Monist. That way I don't uh, violate any CentOS or RHEL trademarks. Uh, so <laughs> uh, I'm going to be doing that before I send anybody a copy of this image. But this is awesome. Uh, thank you to everyone for the support. Uh, it really helped me get to this point, and I am happy for it. I really am. I, I am. <laughs> I'm excited for what the future of this distribution entails. I want to see it become something. Uh, I want to use it to help people learn about how Linux systems are built, especially uh, enterprise Linux systems. Well, that's all I have to say. Have an awesome day.